Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Tech Geek webinar series, our endeavor to empower techies. We believe that sharing of knowledge is the key to enhance our skills and grow us as professionals. With this principle in mind, we have initiated a series of webinars conducted by industry experts to give you all a crisp insight of various domains. The topic of today's session is Implement End-to-End -end ALM SDLC from Customer Request to Delivery with the Omnibus Integration Platform. Our guest speakers today are Mr. Atanu Majumdar and Mr. Sky Basu of Kowire Software Incorporation. Atanu Majumdar is VP Product Solutions at Kowire Software and has been working with application lifecycle management technologies for over 18 years. Atanu envisioned, architected and managed the successful development of enterprise products in ALM and application integration domains. Mr. Sabya Sachi, Sky Basu, is the VP Product Solutions at Kowire Software and will also support in presenting this webinar. So without further delay, I introduce you to our first guest speaker, Mr. Sky Basu. Over to you, Mr. Basu. Thank you, Darina. All right. Um, Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, my name is Kai Basu, and uh, welcome to our webinar on Omnibus and how Omnibus can integrate a number of different tools to deliver a, a solution starting from customer request to delivery. Today with me, I have Atanu Majumdar, and he's the main presenter here. I'm just supporting him. Uh, he, there is no other person better than Atanu to do this because he's the architect and the visionary in terms of creating this complete uh, technology to integrate all these different multi-vendor tools. But I'll start with a brief presentation to give you an overview of the technology and then Atanu will show you and demonstrate you uh, with respect to the actual uh, tools from different vendors and how that integration works. So let's start with a question that why do we integrate a number of different ALM and SDLC tools? The first reason is actually uh, very simple, is that data visibility across the tools. Uh, we want to see the data of one tool in another tool. We also call it data plumbing. But that's just the tip of the iceberg. We should be able to achieve much more than that. For example, we can create the traceability between the objects in different tools so that when one object in one tool gets changed, we will know what are the impacts on other objects in other tools. So kind of creating a change management and impact analysis across different tools. We'll be also implement a process automation across the tools for the whole life cycle. You see that we use different tools which has got its own uh, workflows. For example, we use a bug tracking tool with its own workflow or a requirements management tool with its own review and approval workflow. But what about that workflow which cuts across the tool's boundary and create a whole life cycle process? We should be able to do that when we integrate different tools. And finally, one of the biggest advantage we should be getting out of the integration is creating different kinds of dashboard, reports, metrics, KPI out of the data coming from different tools. Now what is even more important is because of the relationship between the different objects and different tools, we would be able to create the metrics and reports which are otherwise impossible. And we can uncover new kinds of patterns, new kinds of metrics, which is not possible to find out from a single tool. Now, what are the benefits of integration? Let me quickly go through a list. Actually, this is a pretty long list. For example, we would be able to get the greater insight into the whole progress of development. If we can peek into the, each of the tools and how they are working, uh, their workflow, etc. And we can also implement the best practices for all these different kinds of processes. Uh, with just one tool, you'd be able to kind of limit it to one process, but when you have multiple processes working together, you can really have a meaningful process for the whole life cycle. When you have a geographically distributed team and the tools are being uh, used are also geographically distributed, 
with the integration, you'd be able to connect all these tools across the geography. You can foster the collaboration between the stakeholders, and stakeholders are not just the developers, the developers, the project managers, the business analysts, and of course the customers. We can create some measurable productivity gain for not only for the for the whole project, but now you can go to the individual individual tool users at almost every level. Now you can create these kinds of metrics. Since the customers are now part of a larger uh, team, larger collaborative team, and they can use their own tools and integrate with the rest of the tool ecosystem, so you can give them uh, the, the, uh, the visibility of what is really happening. And of course, you have the control of how much of visibility you will be giving to your customer. And that actually increases the customer satisfaction quite a bit. And what I mentioned a number of times, that this actionable metrics is very, very important. And these metrics are coming from real time from different tools. And that's why they are much more important than the static metrics you are otherwise you can create when the tools are not integrated. We can manage the change in the confidence, for example, when we have these traceability relations created between the different objects. And it is in real time, you change one object in one tool, you know immediately what are the other objects impacted by that. And finally, you have the complete flexibility of plug and play with any tool. So today you are using one tool, tomorrow you want to upgrade to a different tool, you can just replace that tool by the new version of the other tool without affecting your whole ecosystem. So these are the benefits of the integration. Now when we decide that yes, we can actually, uh, we want to do integration, what are my options? The first option is actually the most popular one. It's a point-to-point -point integration. In a point-to-point -point integration, you connect every pair of tool by hard-coded uh, integration code. Now, good thing is that it supports uh, based on the breed multi-vendor tool. But the problem is it's very complex because it's in the order of n square when n is the number of tools. The other option you have is when a big vendor comes and says that, guys, why do you really bother about getting all these different tools from different vendors? We have all the tools and already they are integrated. Now, that's possibly a good choice for a company who is just starting from the scratch, doesn't have any investment in any tool. But unfortunately, that is not the case for most of the companies. And also, it is not necessarily true that they are, all of their tools are best of the breed. That brings us to the third option, which is the ALM integration platform, which is basically what Omnibus is. So with the ALM integration platform, now you can support best of the breed, and also you can have the adapter connected, uh, the tools are connected to the uh, enterprise service bus just by an adapter. By doing that, you now have the complexity brought down to order of n when n is the number of tools. So visually, if you compare between point to point and the enterprise service bus, this is how they look like. So if you have 10 tools, in case of point-to-point, -point, you have to create 45 different custom integration. In case of ESB, you just need 10 adapters. Now assume that you are adding an 11th tool to the mix. In case of point-to-point, -point, you have to create 10 different uh, integration to connect that 11th tool to the existing 10 tools. In case of enterprise service bus, you just need one adapter. So 10 versus one. That is the kind of savings you can get by using an enterprise service bus uh, in terms of the uh, implementation, maintenance, management, everything. By the way, ESB is a very well-established technology for a long time, but Cover is the uh, first company to introduce ESB in the tools industry. Now let's talk about Omnibus components. Omnibus is actually consists of a number of different technology together. Uh, first of all, as I mentioned, that it uses ESB. Also, it uses web services, which basically means that the tools you're integrating, they can be anywhere in the world, running on any kind of platform, whether it is Windows, Linux, even mainframe, and behind the firewall. The Omnibus platform consists of the following components. It starts with the Covair Entity Framework, so basically using that, 
you can create different entities which correspond to the objects in this external tools. So for example, you can create a requirements within Govair which ma maps to uh, requirements in Requisite Pro, uh, requirements in Quality Center, etc. It also has the interface, actually multiple interfaces, to create the traceability relations between the different kinds of objects. Omnibus includes a very powerful workflow engine called OmniProcess using a Visio-like graphical interface. You can create the processes for any of the objects. So for example, you're using Requisite Pro, which is a requirements management tool, but it does not have a graphical workflow capability. But you can create a workflow in Covair and process enable Requisite Pro and all those requirements in Requisite Pro. Similarly, for other objects and other tools also, you can create these processes. Omnibus platform also includes four different reporting engines, uh, HTML, Excel, Crystal, and Microsoft Word. And using these reporting engines, you can create very powerful consolidated reports and dashboards by getting the data from different tools. Omnibus also includes a very user-friendly drag-and-drop interface to create and manage the integration rules. One very important point here is that unlike point-to-point -point integration, where the business rules, how the and when the data will be flowing from one tool to another tool is hard-coded in the integration itself. But in case of Omnibus, the adapters are actually very thin layer. It just uh, exposes the, the data layer of each of these tools. Actual business rule of how the data will be flowing and when the data will be flowing from one tool to another tool is managed by the Omnibus platform and managed by the end users using a drag and drop interface. That makes it much easier to maintain an integration. And finally, of course, the platform includes the Omnibus execution engine. Now, in addition to Omnibus platform, you will also need the adapters for those tools which you want to integrate. Now, Covair actually includes two kinds of adapters. One of the adapters for those tools which has got its own repository, for example, Requisite Pro or ClearQuest or TFS. And then also it has got plugins for those tools which does not have its own repository, for example, Eclipse or Visual Studio. So sitting within Eclipse, you can actually access the, the repository of Covair using web services. Now, Omnibus is not just the technology to create the adapters and just to integrate different tools. It's actually a complete environment to manage your uh, integration. So Omnibus is being used by some very large companies uh, uh, with uh, uh, tens of thousands of users uh, with uh, uh, 15, 20 different tools. So to manage uh, such a large ecosystem of uh, integrated tools, you need some very uh, powerful tools to manage that. For example, the conflict detection, the system recovery, load balancing, etc. So those things are already built in as part of Omnibus to manage those kinds of large deployments. And uh, Covair also supports both synchronization as well as federation. Synchronization basically means that when you uh, pass the data from one tool to another tool, and federation basically means on demand you access the data from the other tool. Uh, Omnibus supports both of this. And as I mentioned at the, at the beginning of this presentation that you should be able to get values beyond just the data plumbing, and Omnibus actually allows you to get all of those things, the process, the traceability, the project and resource management, and all kinds of reports and dashboarding. These are uh, the existing adapters. Actually, this is a growing list. And as you can see, for each kind of, uh, each classes of tools, uh, we support multiple different tools from different vendors. Now, if you're interested in a particular tool and you don't see an adapter here, uh, typically it takes about six to eight man weeks to create an adapter. It's uh, that simple, as a matter of fact. And we are creating new adapters almost every quarter. So if you're interested in a particular adapter, let us know and we'll create it for you. Uh, this is actually, I'll just quickly uh, introduce this. So this shows that uh, Omnibus can be actually used for cloud integration as well with a number of different cloud applications as shown at the top, QuickBooks and NetSuite or ServiceNow, etc. And then you have got all the other tools which are running on-premise. 
And then you can have Covert Omnibus, which may be implemented or deployed both on the cloud or on the on-premise and integrate both the cloud applications to the on-premise applications, which is actually a great advantage for quickly deploying Omnibus and integrating both the cloud and on-premise tools. So this is our uh, scenario for today's uh, demonstration, which Atanu will show you in a minute. So we'll start with a customer request from Salesforce. Uh, we'll do the requirements management using uh, IBM uh, Rational Requisite Pro. We'll use the coding using both Visual Studio and Eclipse. Configuration management will be done by ClearCase. Uh, test management using HP Quality Center, bug tracking by Atlassian Jira, and all the project management, reporting, dashboarding, all of those will be done by Covair. And all of these uh, data transfer, as you will see here, uh, as uh, Atanu demonstrated, you will see that these are bidirectional. All right, so let's switch to Atanu and let me transfer it to him. All right. Good evening, everybody. Thanks, Kai, uh, for explaining it uh, clear clearly. Why do we need an integrated ALM environment? So in today's demo, <clears throat> I will walk you through an example software development scenario where different stakeholders are using different tools throughout the software development lifecycle stages and we'll see how Covair Omnibus integration platform keeps them connected and let them collaborate real time. So we'll start our demonstration with Sean. Sean is a <coughs> customer support engineer. He is using Salesforce to manage the request or the tickets coming from his customer. So he would start this development scenario by submitting a new ticket in Salesforce. So let's get to Salesforce. So this is the Salesforce uh, interface and as you can see Sean is logged in and <clears throat> this is the home page uh, in Salesforce. So let's get to the tickets tab. And here he would create a new ticket for his customer. So let's add a new ticket here. <coughs> Demo web inner customer ticket from Salesforce. Let's choose the requirement type as customer and let's put some description here. Description for this and requirement status is submitted. Now let's save it. So a new ticket is submitted demo webinar customer ticket from SF. Uh, <clears throat> and you can see that <clears throat> it's submitted by Sean. Time is 4.49 a.m. So now let's <clears throat> go back to our slide here. So now the ticket is submitted. What is the next stage in the software development lifecycle? this ticket needs to be worked on uh, for requirement analysis and design. So Mark is the requirement analyst here and he is using IBM Requisite Pro tool for managing the requirement. Now he should see this Salesforce ticket in Rec Pro so that he can analyze this particular requirement 
and decide whether he wants to implement it and then go create the new functional requirement and link with this Salesforce ticket. And that whole process needs to happen in the background automatically. So let's go to our requisite pro So this is the requisite pro. I'm logging in as Mark. See, this is the customer ticket that Sean just submitted in Salesforce. But Mark is the requirement analyst and he is using requisite pro tool. This customer ticket is immediately replicated in Requisite Pro and Mark can see that requirement or ticket directly from within Requisite Pro. He doesn't need to go log into Salesforce to see it. It is automatically replicated for him in Requisite Pro. So now he checks these things. Also see the description got replicated here. Now he reviews this requirement and decides to go ahead implementing this particular requirement. So he needs to kind of uh, drill it down to a functional requirement. So what we would do is we would go here and create a new functional requirement. So demo webinar functional requirement from Rec Pro. And let's put a description for these. <clears throat> you can go to the attributes uh, tab and change some of the attributes. Let's set it to very high status. We will keep it as submitted. And then let's add this functional requirement. So this functional requirement now got added into the requisite pro. Now let's go back to this customer requirement which came from Salesforce and what I now want to do is I want to relate it to the functional requirement that I just created. So this is the functional requirement we just created uh, in Requisite Pro. So link it it's done now. So as a requirement analyst Mark got into Requisite Pro he could see the requirements automatically replicated from Salesforce. He could decide on whether he wants to implement the requirement and then he can he can create the functional requirement and link it with the customer ticket coming from Salesforce. So now he is done. Let's close this tool. And what is the next stage now? So now that the requirement got created, somebody needs to work on it to develop. And Dave is the developer here. And he is using Eclipse for Java development. So he should see this customer ticket from Salesforce and the functional requirement from Requisite Pro from within Eclipse so that he can start working on it and then he needs to write the code and after he is done with writing code he needs to check it in so he is using IBM clear case for configuration management so from within Eclipse he would check it in into clear case and link it with the functional requirement because he is writing the code to implement this particular requirement coming from Requisite Pro. So let's get to Eclipse. So I'm opening up Eclipse here. So this is the Eclipse interface and we have Cover has a plugin for Eclipse as, and as you can see here 
this menu item omnibus so we say connect so Dave is connecting here and see you can Dave can see all the the projects that he is working on and one of the project is new app development and he can see all the items coming from different tools uh, into Covair. So for example, the requirement list. So now if I short by ID, see both the items here. This is the item coming from Salesforce, demo webinar customer ticket from Salesforce. And the one that Mark created within the Quizit Pro, which is the functional requirement, demo webinar functional requirement from Rec Pro. So as a developer from within my preferred tool environment, which is in this case Eclipse IDE, I could see the requirements that I need to work on coming from different tools. So let's open up this particular requirement uh, customer ticket coming from Salesforce. So I can see the details, I can, if there is a description, attachment, comment, all the tabs are there and I can see all the details. Uh, let's get to the traceability tab. So you see, remember in Requisite Pro, this customer ticket coming from Salesforce was linked to the functional requirement from Requisite Pro. Okay? So not just the data, but also the relationship between the customer requirement and the functional requirement that is created in a different tool. In this case, Rec Pro, I could see it as a developer from within my IDE. Okay, and similarly, I can see uh, the my task, for example. So. <clears throat> Covair also has a kind of process automation uh, engine as uh, Sky mentioned. We are not uh, kind of uh, doing the demo for uh, that process engine today, but that process can create tasks for uh, developers, for testers automatically as per your defined process and you can see all the tasks here and work on it. Okay. Now, what I need to do now that I have kind of found that there is a requirement that needs to be implemented, I need to write code. So now I connect to clear case and then so this is my project. So let me start creating a new class. So demo web inner uh, class okay so this is my the class name and I click finish then I cancel it and this is the the Java class file so let's say I put my code here okay so I'm done with my coding now what I want to do is I want to check this code file into clear case. So what I do is go to team and add to source control okay? and say okay and what it does it prompts you see the Covair software dialog here it prompts you to select an item, it could be a requirement, it could be a defect. Here in this case, I'm implementing a requirement, so I want to check in this particular code file in the context of the functional requirement that came from Requisite Pro. So this is the one, 505, demo webinar functional requirement from Rec Pro. So I select that and say OK. So that 
file now checked in into clear case in the context of this particular uh, requirement. If I now go here into team and go into the history and if I open up the properties you will see so see from within the clear case also I can see that this was this particular code file was in the context of this particular requirement demo webinar function requirement from REC Pro. Okay. So now I'm kind of uh, as a developer from within Eclipse ID I could see my requirement, could see the, the customer ticket uh, coming from Salesforce and then I could work on my code and check it in in the context of this particular requirement. So I'm done as a developer now. So I will close Eclipse and go back to our presentation slide here. Sorry. So Devra is using Visual Studio. She is not using Eclipse. She is doing a .NET development and she also should see the requirements exactly the same way as Dev could do it from within Eclipse. So let's go to uh, Visual Studio and see it uh, quickly. So this is, I'm opening up now Visual Studio, Microsoft Visual Studio interface. So similar to Eclipse, we have an Omnibus plugin here and we can connect. So Debra kind of connects and like Eclipse you could see his items here uh, and open up the requirement and I now short it. See I can see the both the uh, items coming from Salesforce and Rec Pro. So now let's uh, open up this rec pro item requirement so you could see the details of these and if I go to traceability now now I see two items connected to this so one mark uh, one is coming from the Salesforce um, customer ticket one link and another link they just checked in the file in the context of this particular requirement so we could see what is checked in in the context of this particular requirement. So Debra has the complete knowledge that Dave has already checked in a file in the context of this particular requirement. Okay. Uh, so she could also write the codes and check it in into clear case or into team foundation server for example. Uh, so we'll not get into that today. Just one other thing I would like to show you here is uh, she could also see these uh, um, requirement in TFS. So let's open up the Team Foundation server. See here. So you could see the ticket in the Team Foundation server uh, list of requirements that is also automatically replicated as it was created in Salesforce. Okay, and you could double click it you could see the details of this uh, particular uh, requirement okay so she could even use team foundation server where things uh, coming from different tools can automatically be replicated and synchronized okay so now she is done with uh, uh, her development and will go back to the slide once again so what is the next step now so now that the development is done, it needs to be tested. So Ted is the tester here and he is using HP Quality Center for managing his test. So he also needs to have visibility into the customer ticket that got submitted from the Salesforce and the functional requirement that got created by Mark in Requisite Pro. So he should have visibility into all these and then he can create the test case to 
test these requirements and then run it and record the test results. So let's see how TED can use Quality Center. So this is the, the Quality Center uh, interface and TED is logged in as you can see here, user is TED T. So let's now, and this is the requirements uh, list, so let's now refresh the requirements tab and you see here similar to Rec Pro, similar to Visual Studio, similar to Eclipse, you could see the customer ticket coming from Salesforce, the functional requirement coming from Requisite Pro automatically replicated here for you. You don't need to kind of get out of your uh, HP Quality Center tool to see all these requirements. Those are automatically replicated here and get synchronized through Covair Omnibus. And one thing you need to remember here is this is not just one-time replication. The customer ticket can now change in Salesforce or the functional requirement can be modified by Mark within the Quizit Pro. You could see all these things as they are getting changed in different tools in real time from within Quality Center. Now what I need to do, I need to create a test case for this particular requirement. So I will get here and create a new test. So demo web in our test case from QC. So I've created one and I what I need to do is I need to create a test step. Step one, expected result one and and also I'm creating this test case to test this particular requirement, functional requirement. So now I'm done. So what I have created is a test case to test this particular requirement. So now I'm in this Rec Pro requirement and if I go to the test coverage page, I could see that a test case is created now to test this particular requirement. Okay. Now the next step is to uh, to execute this particular test case and see whether it is uh, kind of working as expected. So this is a test set webinar demo. What I need to do is select our newly created test case. So demo webinar test case from Quality Center. So, so this is the test case. Now what I want to do is I want to execute this test case since development is already done by Dave and Debra. Okay, so I run this particular test case uh, and let's say I do my test and see that the test case fails. So what I do is I set the test status to fail and put the actual result here and since the test case failed, what I want to do is I want to create a new defect. So demo web inner defect from QC. Submitted from QC. Okay, so now let's set the status to very high and submit this defect. So I executed the test case, I saw that the test fails and I recorded the defect and now I would like to end this execution. Okay. Now if I go to HP Quality Center defects, 
uh, you should see that demo webinar defects submitted from QC. And if I go to the linked entities, you could see that this was against this particular test case. Okay. So as a uh, tester, I uh, Ted got into quality center. He could see the requirements, create the test cases for testing those particular requirements, and then execute the test results as the development is done and record the defect. So now let's go back to our slide. What is the next stage in the software development life cycle? The next stage is now the defect needs to be resolved. So now Kent is probably working on fixing the defect and he is using Atlassian Zira product to manage uh, his defects. So again, he needs to see his defects coming into Jira. Doesn't matter whether it gets created in quality center or in any other tool. So he needs to see all his defects within Jira and then he can start working on it and resolve those uh, defects. So let's see how Kent uh, can see the items from within Jira. So this is Atlassian Jira interface and if I click on this view, I get to see all the items here. Okay. So you see here starting from this particular item 1116 demo webinar customer ticket from SF. So these got replicated from Salesforce. This is 1117 demo webinar functional requirement from Rec Pro. These got created uh, or replicated from uh, Rec Pro. And this is the test case that got replicated from uh, the quality center. Let me refresh it one more time. takes some sometime it takes time to so now you can see the defect demo webinar defect submitted from uh, quality center so now if I get into the details of the test case you could see not just the uh, the test case got replicated here but even the relation between the uh, the requirement and the test case is also uh, kind of replicated here. So that is one big uh, kind of uh, part of Cover Omnibus that it does not replicate only the data part of it. It also replicates and synchronizes the relations between the, um, the items. Okay. So now let's go back to the, uh, the defect here. If I click on the defect, uh, so this is the demo webinar defect submitted from QC. Uh, so it's taking some time to replicate the, the relations. So as a developer, if I'm using Jira, I could see the defect which was actually uh, originated from quality center, but I could see it from here and now I can start uh, working on it. Okay. Um, okay. So what I would like to do is now, now let's say I work on it and then resolve it. So what I would do is I would click resolve issue here and say resolve. So as a developer from within Jira, Kent could see all the items coming from Salesforce, Rec Pro, Quality Center, and the defect that got uh, submitted from Quality Center can work on the defect and resolve it. Okay, so he's done. Now let's go back to 
our PowerPoint slide and see what is the next step. So now as these customer request or ticket from Salesforce was kind of getting implemented by different stakeholders through the software development lifecycle stages, Adrian is the project manager and he needs to see the progress of this particular development as it is uh, going through different life cycle stages and different stakeholders are working on it. Uh, so he needs to see the complete end-to-end -end traceability, he needs to see the reporting and dashboard. So let's go open up uh, Covair here. So this is the Covair uh, application and this is a completely web-based application. So so this is the, the dashboard that is getting uh, retrieved here. So we would come back to the dashboard in a minute, but let's go to the requirements tab here. And see both the requirements, uh, the one that uh, got submitted from Salesforce uh, and the one that got submitted from uh, Requisite Pro, both are showing here, okay? And you could see that this is the origination, uh, is the origin is Salesforce, the origin for REC Pro is shown here. So now let's get into the details of this particular requirement. So this is the uh, requir the customer ticket uh, from Salesforce. Now if I go to the linked requirements section, I should see the, uh, the REC Pro requirement. Okay, so as a project manager, as people are kind of working in different tools to uh, kind of break the, uh, to drill the customer uh, ticket into um, a functional requirement. Uh, I could see it uh, from within my uh, kind of uh, preferred interface, which is over here. So now let's get to the, the functional requirement. So now this is the functional requirement from REC Pro. Now let's open up the link test case. So see here, this is the HP test case that Ted created within Quality Center, but I could see it from within the Covair interface. And this is the linked customer uh, ticket from Salesforce. I could see it here. Okay. Now this is the code file that was checked in by Dave from uh, within IBM um, uh, into IBM Clear Case. So I could see it here. And not only that, I can open up the and the code file here and which is again this is an example of a federated integration and this file is getting uh, kind of retrieved on demand and I could see it see this is the requirement uh, this is the code file and this is my code here okay so as the project manager I could see all these items I could see um, the I should be able to see the defect also here so see the defect that got added that that was basically replicated in Jira, I could see it from here, okay? Now, if I want to see all the items together, uh, we have a kind of graphical interface uh, and we can see all the items and their connectivity here in one place. Okay, so see here, this is the, uh, the functional requirement uh, this is the, the customer ticket from Salesforce. This is the class file that got checked in. This is the test case that was uh, created by Ted uh, to uh, check this particular uh, requirement. If I double click on the test case, it shows that is the, uh, the defect that got created in the context of this particular test case when it was failed. Okay, so I could see all these I kind of um, relations in a nice diagram. 
we have a different uh, view also. We call it a, a testability view. Let's get to there. Uh, so this is our testability view, and if I ex so see the top item here is the Salesforce ticket. If I now expand it, I could see the uh, the Rec Pro requirement. I, if I expand that, uh, I see the class file that was created to implement this particular requirement and the test case that got created by Ted and now also the defect. So see, I could see the whole traceability hierarchy end to end starting from the Salesforce ticket down to the Jira defect. I could see the whole end to end traceability from this Kovia uh, tool. Now let's go back to some of these uh, dashboard items. So these dashboards are real-time dashboards. The data is kind of uh, uh, getting retrieved real-time. And if we drill down, so this is the requirement distribution type. So if I now click on the customer requirement pipe chart portion and short it by ID, I see the top one is demo webinar customer ticket from Salesforce. So this is retrieving data from different tools and showing it here. Okay? If I now go to the functional requirement portion of it and short it, uh, I should see the requirement coming from Rec Pro. So this is the functional requirement that got created in Rec Pro. And also I have some further intelligence that we have here, like say requirements test coverage. So see the top one, the functional requirement, that test case was created by Ted in uh, Quality Center. So I could see it here from within my dashboard that whether any test case is created to check this particular requirement. So I can see this thing here. Similarly, code coverage. So the top level functional requirement, see here, this is, it shows that yes, it got uh, one check file was kind of checked in into clear case. I could see it from here. So similarly, defect coverage. Um, so I, I can get into the more details item, but it shows uh, the the defect counts here. Okay. So now, and also you could see the. Uh, since our defect was resolved, so if I now click on this resolved part of the chart and short it, see here demo webinar defect submitted from QC, so it shows up here. So the point uh, here is I could see the dashboard and the data coming from different tools. Um, so let's now get to the reports. I would like to show you one more report here requirements traceability document. So we have a kind of uh, word template based uh, report generation functionality. So let's kind of see it quickly here. So this is a kind of a report, word based report generated on the fly with the real data coming from different tools. Okay? So you can see it here. So let's see. Let's update the field to the entire table. And see the top item, demo webinar customer ticket from Salesforce. So this is our item. Okay? So I will basically first glance through this. So you could see the rich text um, that can be kind of entered from within the Covair or any other tools. So it shows the whole nicely kind of formatted report with all the uh, kind of traceability relations. So let's go to the particular requirement that we are working on. So this is the ticket got added from Salesforce, then the requisite pro requirement, then the uh, IBM clear case file, quality center uh, test case, and the defect in Jira. So you could see all the 
kind of traceability items end to end also in a nice formatted word report so with these uh, i am done with the demo portion of uh, today's webinar um, i would pass it on to um, sky uh, for the question and session let's just um, change presenter to sky Thanks for the insight. Right, uh, thank you very much, Atanu. That was uh, that was actually a very good uh, demonstration of the, all the tools integrated. Uh, before we go to the uh, question answer session, please use your uh, that uh, Q and A panel uh, under the Go to Webinar to enter your questions. But while we are waiting for some of the questions, let me quickly uh, give you the key takeaway from this webinar. Number one, continue using your existing best of breed tools. You have all these tools. You have invested in these tools. You don't have to replace those tools by the new tools, but you can integrate them all together so that you can get much more value from those standalone tools. That is the number one key takeaway. Then number two is that rather than trying to create some point-to-point -point integration, if you go to you, you, using uh, enterprise service bus architecture, you see that you can get a lot more value out of your integration. For every point-to-point -point integration actually add much more overhead and eventually the integration fails. And many organizations actually have discovered that problem. So they have switched to ESB. Also, you can implement your cross-tool change management as Atanu has uh, explained you uh, very clearly, creating the different kinds of traceability relations starting from the requirements to the functional requirements to the uh, code, uh, code file to the test cases, test cases to the bugs. So all sorts of different kinds of uh, traceability relations you can create and view and manage using Covair. And also, you can do the automate uh, your processes across the tool boundary, as Atanu mentioned. We have not actually demonstrated it today because that itself needs a full webinar, but that actually can do using Covair Omni process. And finally, Atanu has shown some of the different kinds of metrics using the dashboard. You can see the data coming from all these different tools. And also, you have seen a word report where in a nicely formatted way, you could see all these different data, not only that just the data, but the relation among different data. All right, now let's go to uh, the question answer session. So, Atunu, do we have some questions there? I see the questions here. Okay, let me see if we can find out some questions here. I was seeing this questions there, but I... All right, so the first question is, uh, Atunu, this is for you. Okay. Uh, this is from Kuseshwar Prasad. Why do the Eclipse need to show both the ticket from Sean and Mark, whereas it is the same requirement for function of app? Uh, I, I think the answer to that is that that is how we have kind of uh, configured it. If you want to configure it to show only the functional requirement, you can show that. But in this particular case, we wanted to show both the customer as well as the functional requirement. So. Uh, it's not that big a deal if you want to kind of restrict your uh, views to a particular type of requirement, you can actually do that. Uh, the next one is from Prasanna Radhakrishnan. Uh, how relevant is the Omnibus integration platform in embedded software where proprietary tools are used mostly? Atanu, do you want to take that? Yeah, Prasanna is a good question, uh, but um, I think um, probably Sky mentioned in his uh, presentation but I, I can tell you again that uh, uh, Covair Omnibus provides an open API to build these uh, adapters that can be hooked onto Omnibus integration platform. So even if you have proprietary tools that we can build an adapter for that and that way those proprietary tools also can be hooked onto Omnibus and we have done for our customers. Our customers uh, often have their own homegrown proprietary tools. Uh, they are using it for different uh, purpose like project management and some of these uh, PLM uh, purpose and 
for your uh, case, it could be em embedded uh, system tools, and we can build the adapter around that, and that can be uh, kind of hooked onto on the device. Okay, the next question is from Anubhav Kishore. Uh, the question is, what event is fired and at what time the data gets synchronized in different tools when some changes are made in one tool? What is the whole procedure that gets executed at the back end? Back end? Uh, so Anubhav, yes. Uh, so we have a kind of um, uh, the uh, event uh, capture model. So any tool, uh, like say for uh, quality center tool, so as you are adding test case or you are modifying test case or you are deleting test case, uh, you are adding defects, modifying defects, deleting defects. So all these events are getting captured by Covair Omnibus Engine in the background. And you have a configurator tool using which you can say if a requirement or a test case gets added in Covair, I want to push this test case into, uh, let's say, Jira or uh, some other tool. You could configure these actions when an event is generated. What would be the action? And the actions could be in different tools. So that is the event action model that is kind of uh, uh, used in the background to synchronize between different tools. So we'll possibly we'll have uh, uh, time for one more question, and that is from Manish Savant. Uh, how is this integration of various tools done? Does it use uh, APIs and web services? Uh, yes, uh, Manish, uh, Covair uses complete uh, service-oriented architecture. As Sky mentioned, it is the enterprise service-based architecture. So all our interactions with the tools are through um, the web services, and that's why it can even work with your tools which are on behind the firewall. So uh, not all the tools provide um, kind of uh, web services uh, APIs, but we build our adapters as a web service wrapper uh, on top of whatever native API uh, is available for a particular tool. All right. Thank you very much, Atanu. And uh, Garima, with this, uh, we conclude this uh, webinar. So thank you so much uh, to everybody, all the attendees, for attending this webinar. And I hope that uh, you uh, got some value out of this webinar to see how Omnibus actually works. Thank you. Thanks, Mr. Majumdar and Mr. Basu for your session on implement end-to-end -end ALM's SDLC from customer request to delivery with the Omnibus integration platform. It was indeed a great session. Uh, I would also like to thank all our participants for their uh, support uh, in making this webinar a success. The recording of the webinar will be available on TechGig by tomorrow. Thank you all. Bye-bye. Bye. Take care.